Good morning. I will be going over the Sunday School lesson for November 21st, 2021, which is entitled Judgment on the Rebellion. My name is Charlotte Timberlake, and I'm coming to you from Salon Missionary Baptist Church, located in Rochemont, North Carolina, where the Reverend Wayne Johnson is pastor. The scripture lesson text will be coming from Numbers chapter 16, verses 23 through 35, and it reads, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get you up from about the tabernacle of Korah, Datham, and Abiram. And Moses rose up and went unto Datham and Abiram, and the elders of Israel followed him. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest ye be consumed in all their sins. So they get up from the tabernacle of Korah, Datham, and Abiram on every side. And Datham and Abiram came out and stood in the door of their tents, and their wives, and their sons, and their little children. And Moses said, Hereby ye shall know that the Lord have sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of mine own mind. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord have not sent me. But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth and swallow them up with all that appertain unto them, and they go down quick into the pit, then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up, and their houses and all the men that appertained unto Korah and all their goods. They and all that appertained to them went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. And all Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of them, for they said, Lest the earth swallow us up also. And there came out a fire from the Lord, and consumed the two hundred and fifty men that offered incense. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. The Golden Text Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. Psalm chapter 16, verse 1. Today's aim, facts, to study the Lord's character and disposition in reference to addressing the sin of rebellion among his people. Principle, to affirm that God is holy and righteous and is always fair and measured in his response to sin. Application, to acknowledge God's holiness and righteousness when it comes to matters of divine discipline and to realize that our attitudes and actions are seeds that ultimately will bring forth either good or bad fruit. Introducing the lesson. All of God's attributes are very important and worthy of much study for they encourage spiritual growth in the life of every believer. God's holiness and righteousness are especially on display in his response to Korah's rebellion in Numbers chapter 16 verses 23 through 35. Developing the lesson, number one, warning for the congregation. Numbers chapter 16, verses 23 through 27. God's response to Korah's rebellion begins very simply. Quote, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get you up from about the tabernacle of Korah, Datham, and Abiram. End quote, verses 23 through 24. This beginning statement sets the expectation that the ensuing judgment is going to be both sudden and serious. 
the divine pronouncement is followed in verses 25 through 27 by Moses' stern and quick action toward the congregation of Israel, ordering them to move away from the tents of the rebels and to not even touch anything that these men owned. Number two, vindication for the leaders. Numbers chapter 16 verses 28 through 30. Moses made an extended statement prefacing that which the Lord was about to do. He wanted the congregation of Israel to really understand what was about to occur. He did not want anyone to think that the calamitous impending events were in any way a coincidence, but rather were a divine judgment. In fact, the unique nature of the judgment would affirm it as coming from God alone and vindicating his chosen servants, Moses and Aaron. Number three, judgment of the rebels. Numbers chapter 16, verses 31 through 35. As Moses finished speaking, the divine retribution began. There was no delay whatsoever. The form of judgment was unique. The ground under Korah and his accomplices split open and swallowed all the dissidents and their possessions. They all fell into the chasm and then the earth closed upon them. As this divine action concluded, another act of divine judgment occurred. The leaders who aligned themselves with Korah in his rebellion and had gathered at the tabernacle verses 16 through 19, were consumed by a fire from the Lord. God's holiness and righteousness teach us important aspects of how we must think and act in order to be in alignment with the Lord's character. I will now go over the questions in the back of the lesson. Question number one, who went with Moses to approach Datham and Abiram? The answer, with the elders of Israel in tow, Moses went directly to Datham and Abiram. Question number two, what did Moses tell the people to do in regard to these two men? The answer, when Moses and the elders reached Datham and Abiram, he immediately told all the people to get away from the tents of these men and not touch any of their belongings. Question number three, what did Moses warn concerning anyone who stood with the rebels or touched any of their belongings? The answer, these men were under God's wrath and any contact with them or their possessions put a person at great risk of God's judgment. Question number four, how would the people know that God had sent Moses? The answer, Moses declared before the people that if Korah, Datham, and Abiram died as men commonly died, that is, by natural causes, it would mean the Lord had not called him. However, if they died in a very unique way, namely by the ground suddenly opening up and swallowing them alive and taking them down into, quote, the pit, end quote, Hebrew Sheol, this would clearly demonstrate that God had sent him and that these men had despised the Lord. Question number five, what happened to Korah, Datham, and Abiram immediately after Moses finished speaking? The answer, in vivid demonstration that the Lord was with Moses and had sent him, the ground split apart underneath Korah, Datham, and Abiram. They fell into the crevice along with all their possessions and those people who stood with them. Question number six, what does the Hebrew word Sheol refer to? The answer, quote, pit, end quote, translates the Hebrew word Sheol, which refers to the place of the dead. Question number seven, why was it necessary for God to deal with this rebellion in such a drastic way? The answer, so while the Lord's actions might at first appear quite severe to some, we can see why such 
drastic action on his part was necessary. The rebellion had to be squelched. Question number eight. How did the people respond when they saw God judge the men? The answer. The Israelites scattered in an effort to find secure ground. Fear and panic set in quickly as everyone fled in an attempt to avoid suffering the same fate as the three rebels and their households. Question number nine. Why can this event not be written off as a natural phenomenon such as an earthquake? The answer. This occurrence cannot be dismissed as a natural event such as an earthquake that coincidentally happened at this particular moment. For one thing, it took place just as Moses had said just minutes before. For another, when the ground breaks apart in an earthquake, it does not repair itself. In this incident, the ground closed back up once the guilty parties had fallen into the opening. In question number 10, what happened to the 250 men who joined Korah in the rebellion? The answer, back at the tabernacle, fire came forth from the Lord and consumed the 250 men who had joined with Korah, Datham, and Abiram in this insurrection. Here are the practical points for the lesson. Number one, when we stand up for what is right, we can trust those who are loyal to the Lord to stand with us. Numbers chapter 16, verses 23 through 25. Number two, if we collaborate with sinners, we are likely to become guilty in our actions. Verse 26. Number three, those closest to us often suffer the most for our sins. Verse 27. Number four, if we seek God's will, he will make it evident to us. Verses 28 through 30. Number five, a person only has so long to turn to the Lord. Then comes judgment. This should give us an urgency in evangelism. Numbers chapter 16, verses 31 through 33. Cross-reference Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. And number six, we should maintain a healthy fear of the Lord so we will be reverent and have a greater view of his mercy towards us. Numbers chapter 16, verses 34 through 35, and Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. In summary, what did we learn from the Sunday School lesson today? We learned that God will not tolerate rebellion. Rebelling against God never succeeds. The challenge to Moses' leadership was, in all reality, a rebellion against God. Rebelling against God never succeeds because rebellion brings judgment. To question the authority of Moses and Aaron was to question the choices God had made. God chose for his people who he wanted to be in the leadership positions. When Korah felt that he knew better, the consequences were fatal. When we make changes to God's divine commands, just like Korah, we have overstepped our bounds. Rebellion and disobedience destroys our relationship with God. Are you rebelling against God? This will conclude the lesson for this morning. Thank you for listening. Happy Thanksgiving. Wishing you abundant blessings, peace, and happiness.